Okay, so we're talking about summation notation. So what this is doing is this is going back to an integral. So let's wrap our minds around what the integral is. If we're trying to find the area under the curve, we know how to set up a definite integral to find that area under the curve. Well, go back to before I showed you how to integrate or to do a definite integral. Remember when we did the rectangles and trapezoids and midpoints and, and all that stuff? To approximate the area under the curve. We're kind of going back to that idea. So really your integral is the sum of the area of all those tiny rectangles, right? So and if you remember, the more rectangles we had, the closer to the actual area we were talking about, the less of an over or an under approximation, when we have more rectangles, uh, we could get them closer to the curve. So, here's our first example. If we are going to, the, the question is going to be, which of the following uh, shows a representation for this integral? So the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed. So I want to start by just drawing a picture so that we get a visual of what this looks like. Now this is zoomed in, so this looks like x squared right now, but it's actually x cubed because we're only going from 0 to 1. So we're trying to find the area under this curve from 0 to 1, and this is the curve x cubed. So you don't really have to worry about this part because it's always going to be there. The limit as it approaches infinity, n is representing the number of rectangles. Okay, n represents the number of rectangles. So, the more rectangles we have, the closer we are to getting the actual area under the curve. Because they're teeny tiny little rectangles, and essentially it's just like having slivers. And when we add up all those slivers, we're going to get that whole area under the curve. So that's why n is approaching infinity, because we want a bunch of them. Have a great break. It's really on. Yeah, it'll be on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we want as many rectangles as possible. That's why n is approaching infinity. We are summing up, I represents which rectangle you're talking about. So we're either talking about the first rectangle, or the fifth rectangle, or the 100th rectangle. Um, that's what it's talking about. So we're starting with one rectangle, which rectangle is which rectangle, okay? We're starting with our first rectangle, and we're going to, you know, infinity number of rectangles. That's what that notation right there is meaning. And then the sigma there is the sum. So we're adding up all these rectangles. Well, we're finding the area of the curve. So the area of these rectangles, how do we find the area of the rectangle? How do we find the area of these rectangles? It's length times width, okay? Well, how do we get the length and the width? How did we do that when we were doing our remodel sums, our rectangles? The y values are the height. What was the width? Huh? The length of the interval, right? How much, how wide our interval was? Okay. So, what we're looking at is we're looking at, where's my pen go? f of x times delta x, okay? Because that f of x is the height, delta x is the width. Okay, so we're adding up the area of all the rectangles. The area of all the rectangles will be the height, f of x, y, times the width, delta x. Well, we've got to get specific about it, okay? We've got to get specific about it. So, we need to change these from x's to i's and n's. And we have to change these from x's to i's and n's. And here's how we're going to do that. Um, the easier part is to look at the width first. Okay, so we're going to look at the width first. The limit stuff doesn't change. n is approaching infinity. We're still doing the summation as i goes from 1 to n. Okay, the delta x part is the easiest. The width of each rectangle. Well, let's say... What if we have five rectangles 
in this interval? What's the width of each of a uh, rectangle? 0.2 or 1 fifth, right? What if we have 10? 1 tenth, okay? Uh, what if we have 100? 1 over 100. So our width there, our delta x, is always going to be uh, the width of the interval divided by the number of rectangles, okay? So the number on top is the width of the interval. And the n is always on the bottom. n is the number of rectangles. Okay. So, um, if our interval, say for example, if our interval had been from 2 to 5 instead of from 0 to 1, and here on the end, we would have 3 over n, because our interval would be with 3. Okay. That's the easiest part to pick out. When you see these multiple choice answer choices, um, that's where I look first. Because usually, um, you can eliminate half the answer choices just based on that part of it. If you know that it's the width of the interval divided by n, every single time, that's what's supposed to go there. Okay. Now, it goes, we've got to replace f of x. Okay, our function here is x cubed. Part of the is time needed to subtract case number three for two part of the same. So we need to put our function x cubed, but we can't put x there. Okay, you know how neat. Come on. All right. Um, so x cubed. So put us up front seat in the cubed. Because that's going to give us our answer that f of x is x cubed. So if front c is cubed, we've got to figure out a way to represent x using i's and n's. And we've got to represent x using i's and n's. So let's think about this. Um, say we're talking about this rectangle right here. Okay. We've got to represent this x value, but we can't use x. So we use our starting point. We started at 0. Okay, we started at 0. And that, let's just say that that is, I don't know, it could be our 5th, it could be our 10th, it could be our 500th rectangle, but let's just say that it's, um, I is the number of the rectangle, and we divide it by N, because uh, I had the reason for it and I forgot. I just know that that's the way it's supposed to be. Can't remember why we divide by n. Well, i is not the area. I is which rectangle we're talking about. So, say we're talking about the fifth rectangle. That's why, yes, okay? So if that's the fifth rectangle and we have 10 total rectangles, then it's halfway through our interval. That's what it is. So if we had um, 50 rectangles, that would be our 25th rectangle. It still puts us at one half every single time. That's why we have by hand. Thank you, guys. All right? So that's what we have to recognize, okay? That's what you have to recognize. That is the summation notation for that interval. Okay. We're not going to simplify. We're not going to simplify past that point. We're just going to leave it like that. You can simplify, but it just wants us to recognize the notation. Okay. So let's look at this one. The integral from 2 to 4 of e to the x dx 
Okay, so I said the easiest part is to do the width of the interval. So it's width 2, because we're going from 2 to 4. So we've got 2 over n on the int. Okay, now our f of x is e to the x. Okay, our variable is in the exponent. So we've got to replace x with i's and n's. So if we think the same way that we just did, um, i over n every time represents your x value. But we're not starting at 0 this time. We started at 2. So we've got to do 2 plus i over n because we started at 2 and we're adding that i over n idea. That's going to put us where we're supposed to be. Where it would be what? Well, you're not going to stop. Literally, this is, um, I'm getting ready to show you what the questions look like. Um, and I don't think there's really anything we can do to simplify that one. So if you flip your paper over, you'll see an example of what the problem looks like on the AP exam. Okay, there are multiple choice questions. Okay, so you don't actually have to worry about coming up with it like we were just having to come up with it. Okay, it's literally just being able to match the two together. So, we're trying to figure out which limit is equal to the integral from 2 to 5 of x squared. So the easiest part is to look at the width of the interval. The interval is 3 units long, so that means that I'm going to automatically eliminate answer choices A and C. I'm only looking at answer choices B and D. Oh, I missed something on this one. It should be 2i over n because of the length of our interval. Sorry, 2 plus 2i over n. I left that off. Okay? Um, so we're looking at b and d. The only difference between b and d is b has a k. So I'm not going to use k's instead of i's. It's the same difference. Okay? b has k over n. d has 3k over n. Whatever number is right here over n has to be over there as well. So it's got to be answer choice d. Okay, it's got to be answer choice D. Hmm? It starts at 1. Okay, it starts at, well, this, it, it's not saying K is equal to 1, it's saying you start with, this is your starting point, you start with K is equal to 1 and you count up to K is equal to N, is, is what that notation is talking about. Okay, so you see, they, they give some explanations um, under that, and I wanted to put that on here. Um, it explains why A is incorrect. It's because the width is wrong. Okay? Um, so it actually tells you which one it would be. It would be from the interval 2 to 3 uh, is answer choice A. Um, answer choice e, B is incorrect because, uh, let's see here, it used widths of 1 over N, but it's not consistent with the 3 over N that they have in the answer choice um, that it's talking about this part. Um, C is incorrect because it used, it's inconsistent too, and then D is the correct answer. Let me show you that. Okay. Um, one more here, just matching it up. I'm going to give you a second to look at those, and then uh, we'll talk about which one's the correct answer. So these really are, either, they're difficult to generate from scratch on their own, and hopefully I did a halfway decent job of explaining it, um, but they're really easy to look at here and pick out the right answer. You, you look first at the width of the interval at the end, so same thing here, eliminate A and C. It's not always A and C that you'll eliminate. To answer A and C, whatever number you got here, you got to have inside as well. Those have to be consistent. Yes, sir. No, I've never seen. Mm -mm. 